The Kakamo Crusader, The Untold Rise and Reign of Carlo Gambino. Chapter 1, Kakamo, Sicily, Beginnings of a Mafia Legacy. The scorching Sicilian sun beat down on the sleepy town of Kakamo, casting long shadows over the weathered stone buildings and winding cobblestone streets. Here, in the heart of the island's rugged interior, the grip of the mafia was unrelenting, its tentacles reaching into every facet of daily life. It was in this stifling environment that Carlo Gambino was born in 1902, the son of a low-level mobster whose loyalty and obedience to the local crime family had earned him a meager existence. From an early age, Carlo witnessed the harsh realities of life under the Mafia's iron rule, extortion, violence, and the constant threat of retribution for those who dared to defy the established order. As a child, Carlo observed his father's subservience to the capo, the ruthless boss who demanded absolute fealty. He saw the fear in his father's eyes when the capo's henchmen came calling, demanding their cut of the family's meager earnings. And he learned, with a growing sense of resentment, that the only way to survive and thrive in this world was to embrace the very same ruthless tactics that had ensnared his father. One fateful day, when Carlo was just 19 years old, the fragile balance of his family's existence was shattered. His father, caught in the crossfire of a power struggle within the Mafia ranks, was gunned down in the street, his lifeless body left to rot as a warning to others who might dare to challenge the established order. In that moment, Carlo's eyes were open to the harsh realities of the world he had been born into. The death of his father, a man he had both feared and pitied, served as a catalyst for Carlo's own transformation. No longer would he be content to cower in the shadows, beholden to the whims of the Mafia elite. Instead, he made the fateful decision to flee Sicily and seek his fortune in the distant land of America, where he hoped to escape the cycle of violence and build a new life on his own terms. With nothing but the clothes on his back and a burning desire for revenge, the young Carlo Gambino boarded a ship bound for the bustling metropolis of New York City, his heart racing with a mixture of trepidation and unbridled ambition. The journey across the Atlantic was arduous, filled with the uncertainty of an unknown future and the lingering ghosts of his past. But Carlo's resolve never wavered. He was determined to leave the oppressive shadow of the Sicilian Mafia behind and carve out a new path for himself, no matter the cost. As the ship's silhouette faded into the horizon, Carlo Gambino stood on the crowded docks of New York Harbor, his eyes narrowed against the glare of the sun. The city before him was a sprawling, chaotic landscape, teeming with opportunity and danger in equal measure. It was here in this foreign land that Carlo would embark on a journey that would transform him from a small-town Sicilian boy into one of the most powerful and feared mafia bosses in American history. The young immigrant wasted no time integrating himself into the intricate web of organized crime that had already taken root in the city. Drawing on the skills and connections he had cultivated back in Sicily, Carlo quickly aligned himself with the notorious Mangano crime family, a powerful organization that held sway over vast swaths of New York's underworld. From the outset, Carlo proved himself to be a valuable asset to the Manganos. His keen business acumen, coupled with a ruthless willingness to eliminate any obstacle in his path, quickly caught the attention of the family's leadership. Carlo's rise through the ranks was meteoric, as he deftly navigated the treacherous currents of Mafia politics, forging strategic alliances and eliminating potential rivals with cold, calculating efficiency. As he climbed the ladder of power, Carlo carefully cultivated a facade of respectability, masking his criminal activities behind the veneer of a successful businessman. He invested in legitimate enterprises, using his ill-gotten gains to establish a network of fronts that served to obscure the true source of his wealth and influence. This dual-pronged approach, combining brute force with a veneer of legitimacy, would become the hallmark of Carlo's rise to power. Yet despite his growing success, Carlo remained haunted by the ghosts of his past. The memory of his father's brutal murder never strayed far from his mind, fueling a deep-seated desire for vengeance that would shape the course of his life. He was driven not merely by a lust for wealth and power, but by a burning need to assert his dominance over the very forces that had once held his family in thrall. In the years that followed, Carlo's ruthless ambition would propel him ever higher, as he navigated the treacherous waters of the Mafia hierarchy with a skill that belied his relative youth. 
His reputation for cunning and violence grew, and soon the name Carlo Gambino became synonymous with the ruthless efficiency and unwavering loyalty that were the hallmarks of the Mangano crime family. As the 1920s drew to a close, the young immigrant from Kakamo had firmly established himself as a rising star within the Mangano organization, a man to be feared and respected by friend and foe alike. But the path that had brought him to this point was paved with the blood of his enemies, and the ghosts of his past continued to haunt him, whispering of the price he would ultimately have to pay for the power he so craved. Chapter 2. Climbing the Ranks of the Mangano Family the bustling streets of New York City in the 1920s teemed with the energy of a nation on the cusp of a new era. For the young Carlo Gambino, fresh off the boat from Sicily, the towering skyline and relentless pace of the city presented both opportunity and peril. Though the ghosts of his past still haunted him, the 19-year-old had arrived with a singular determination to forge a new life, one that would allow him to escape the oppressive shadow of the Sicilian Mafia. Guided by instincts honed in the crucible of his Kakamo upbringing, Carlo wasted little time in seeking out the criminal elements that had already taken root in the city. It was not long before he crossed paths with the Mangano crime family, a powerful organization that had carved out a formidable empire in the shadowy underworld of New York. The Manganos, led by the ruthless Joseph Mangano, were immediately intrigued by the young Sicilian's keen intellect and unwavering resolve. Sensing an opportunity, they welcomed Carlo into their ranks, recognizing the potential he possessed to become a valuable asset in their ongoing power struggles. From the moment he set foot in the Mangano's inner sanctum, Carlo immersed himself in the intricate web of criminal enterprise that defined their operations. He studied the family's business dealings with a keen eye, absorbing every nuance of their illicit ventures. From the extortion rackets that lined their coffers to the elaborate schemes of money laundering and racketeering that kept their criminal empire afloat. But Carlo was no mere observer. He quickly proved himself to be a prodigy in the art of organized crime, his sharp mind and relentless ambition propelling him through the ranks with startling speed. Where others might have faltered, Carlo thrived, demonstrating a natural aptitude for the brutal tactics and cunning deception that were the hallmarks of the Mafia's modus operandi. As he climbed the ladder of power within the Mangano organization, Carlo exhibited a ruthless efficiency that both impressed and unnerved his new associates. He was a master of deception, adept at concealing his criminal activities behind a veneer of respectability. Outwardly, he cultivated the image of a successful businessman, investing his ill-gotten gains in legitimate enterprises that served to obscure the true source of his wealth and influence. Yet, beneath this carefully crafted facade, Carlo remained a cold, calculating predator, willing to eliminate any obstacle that stood in his path. His rise through the ranks was marked by a series of strategic eliminations, as he methodically removed rival mobsters and secured his position within the Mangano hierarchy. One particularly notorious incident occurred when Carlo was tasked with handling a troublesome union leader who had been skimming funds from the family's construction rackets. Rather than resorting to the usual strong-arm tactics, Carlo devised a more elaborate plan, luring the unsuspecting victim to a remote location under the guise of a business negotiation. There, in a calculated display of brutality, he orchestrated the man's brutal murder, ensuring that the message of the Mangano's dominance was delivered in the most unambiguous of terms. As word of Carlo's ruthless efficiency spread through the criminal underworld, his reputation as a rising star within the Mangano family grew. He became known for his ability to navigate the treacherous waters of mafia politics, forging strategic alliances and eliminating potential rivals with a cold, calculated precision that belied his relative youth. Yet even as Carlo's power and influence continued to expand, he remained haunted by the ghosts of his past. The memory of his father's murder in Kakamo never strayed far from his mind, fueling a deep-seated desire for vengeance that would shape the course of his life. He was driven not merely by a lust for wealth and power, but by a burning need to assert his dominance over the very forces that had once held his family in thrall. In the years that followed, Carlo's unwavering loyalty to the Mangano family was rewarded with ever-increasing responsibility and trust. He became a trusted confidant of Joseph Mangano himself, 
advising the family boss on matters of strategy and serving as a key enforcer in the family's ongoing power struggles. As the Roaring Twenties drew to a close, Carlo Gambino had firmly established himself as a rising star within the Mangano organization, a man whose ruthless efficiency and unwavering loyalty had earned him a place of prominence among the city's criminal elite. But the path that had brought him to this point was paved with the blood of his enemies, and the ghosts of his past continued to haunt him, whispering of the price he would ultimately have to pay for the power he so craved. With each passing year, Carlo's influence and reach expanded as he leveraged his connections and business acumen to secure ever greater control over the family's illicit operations. He diversified the Mangano's interests, investing in legitimate enterprises that served to obscure the true source of their wealth and power, construction, waste management, and real estate. These were the public faces of an empire built on extortion, money laundering, and the constant threat of violence. Yet, even as his material success grew, Carlo remained driven by an insatiable hunger for more. The wealth and power he had amassed were not merely ends in themselves, but tools to be wielded in his ongoing quest for dominance. He craved the respect and fear of his peers, and he was willing to do whatever it took to ensure that his name would be spoken in hushed tones by those who dared to cross him. As the 1930s dawned, Carlo's position within the Mangano family had become all but unassailable. He had navigated the treacherous waters of mafia politics with a deft touch, forging strategic alliances and eliminating potential rivals with a ruthless efficiency that was the envy of his peers. And with each passing year, the young Sicilian immigrant from Kakamo grew ever more entrenched in the criminal underworld of New York, his influence and wealth expanding like a metastasizing cancer that threatened to consume all in its path. Yet even as he basked in the trappings of his success, Carlo remained haunted by the lingering ghosts of his past. The memory of his father's brutal murder continued to haunt him, fueling a burning desire for vengeance that would one day propel him to seize control of the Mangano family and transform it into an empire of his own making, the Gambino crime family. Chapter 3. The Anastasia Assassination and the Birth of the Gambino Crime Family the 1950s ushered in a new era of turbulence and upheaval within the tight-knit world of the New York Mafia. Alliances shifted, old feuds reignited, and the delicate balance of power that had long defined the criminal underworld began to fracture and crumble. At the heart of this maelstrom stood Carlo Gambino, a man whose ambition and ruthlessness had propelled him to the upper echelons of the Mangano crime family. As the decade dawned, Gambino had solidified his position as a trusted confidant and key enforcer within the Mangano organization. His reputation for cunning and violence had only grown in the intervening years, and he had become an indispensable asset in the family's ongoing power struggles. But Gambino's sights were set ever higher, and he was now poised to make his boldest move yet, a move that would cement his legacy as one of the most formidable mafia bosses in American history. The catalyst for Gambino's ascension came in the form of a deadly power struggle that was already brewing within the Mangano family. The aging boss, Albert Anastasia, had long been a dominant force within the Mafia hierarchy, feared and respected in equal measure for his ruthless efficiency and uncompromising leadership. But as the 1950s dawned, Anastasia's grip on power began to loosen, and a new generation of ambitious mobsters, including Gambino, saw an opportunity to seize control. Sensing the shifting tides, Gambino began to quietly maneuver behind the scenes, forging strategic alliances and carefully positioning himself to strike when the time was right. He meticulously studied the intricate web of relationships and rivalries that defined the Mangano family, seeking out weaknesses and vulnerabilities that he could exploit to his advantage. As the tension within the family reached a fever pitch, Gambino struck with surgical precision, in a daring and meticulously planned operation, he orchestrated the assassination of Albert Anastasia, the Mangano family's longtime boss. The brazen hit carried out in broad daylight at a Manhattan barbershop sent shockwaves through the mafia world and marked the beginning of Gambino's ascension to power. With Anastasia's death, the Mangano family was left in a state of disarray, its leadership in flux and its members scrambling to assert their own claims to power. Sensing an opportunity, Gambino moved quickly to consolidate his control, leveraging his connections, his business acumen, and his willingness to use violence to eliminate any potential rivals. 
In the aftermath of the Anastasia assassination, Gambino emerged as the undisputed leader of the Mangano family, renaming it the Gambino crime family and asserting his authority over its vast criminal empire. He carefully cultivated an image of respectability, portraying himself as a successful businessman while simultaneously expanding the family's influence into legitimate industries like construction, waste management, and real estate. Yet even as Gambino's power and wealth continued to grow, he remained haunted by the ghosts of his past. The memory of his father's brutal murder in Kakamo still burned within him, fueling a deep-seated desire for vengeance that would shape the course of his reign. He was driven not merely by a lust for power, but by a need to assert his dominance over the very forces that had once held his family in thrall. As the 1950s progressed, Gambino's grip on the Gambino crime family tightened, and his influence within the larger mafia hierarchy grew exponentially. He forged strategic alliances with other powerful families, brokering deals and leveraging his resources to expand the reach of his criminal empire. His ruthless efficiency and unwavering loyalty earned him the respect and fear of his peers. And soon the mere mention of the Gambino name was enough to inspire a sense of unease among those who dared to challenge his authority. Yet for all his success, Gambino lived in a constant state of paranoia and mistrust. He knew that his position at the top of the Mafia hierarchy was tenuous and that the slightest misstep could lead to his downfall. He surrounded himself with a circle of trusted lieutenants, men who had proven their loyalty through acts of violence and deception, and he kept a watchful eye on the shifting alliances and rivalries that threatened to undermine his power. Gambino's obsession with maintaining control extended beyond the boundaries of the criminal underworld. He sought to expand his influence into legitimate industries, using his vast wealth and connections to secure lucrative contracts and gain a stranglehold on key sectors of the economy, construction, waste management, and real estate. These were the public faces of his criminal empire, serving as a veneer of respectability that obscured the true source of his power. As the 1960s dawned, Gambino's reign as the boss of the Gambino crime family was firmly entrenched. He had solidified his position as one of the most powerful and feared mafia leaders in the country, a man whose name was spoken in hushed tones by those who knew the true extent of his criminal activities. His wealth and influence continued to grow, and he became a formidable force to be reckoned with, both in the shadowy world of organized crime and in the legitimate business world that he had infiltrated. Yet even as he basked in the trappings of his success, Gambino remained haunted by the specter of his past. The memory of his father's murder continued to weigh heavily on his mind, a constant reminder of the violent origins of his rise to power. He knew that the price he had paid for his dominance was high and that the ghosts of his past would never truly be laid to rest. As the years passed, Gambino's grip on the Gambino crime family only tightened and his reputation as a ruthless and calculating mafia boss grew ever more formidable. He continued to expand his criminal empire, diversifying his interests and solidifying his control over key industries and sectors of the economy. And all the while, he remained a figure of fear and respect within the mafia hierarchy, a man whose power and influence were matched only by the sheer force of his ambition and the ruthlessness with which he wielded it. But even as Gambino's reign as the Mafia kingpin reached new heights, the seeds of his own downfall were already beginning to take root. The ghosts of his past continued to haunt him, and the constant fear of retaliation from rival families and his own men began to weigh heavily on his mind. As the 1970s dawned, Gambino found himself increasingly reclusive and distrustful a man consumed by the very power he had so meticulously accumulated. Yet, through it all, the name Carlo Gambino remained synonymous with the Mafia's stranglehold on the criminal underworld of New York City. His legacy as one of the most ruthless and successful Mafia bosses in American history would endure long after his death, a testament to the uncompromising ambition and unwavering determination that had defined his rise to power. Chapter 4 The Reign of a Mafia Kingpin and the Consequences of Carlo's Legacy As the 1970s dawned, Carlo Gambino's iron grip on the criminal empire he had meticulously constructed showed no signs of loosening. From his heavily guarded mansion in the affluent Staten Island neighborhood, 
The aging mafia boss ruled over the Gambino crime family with an unwavering authority that demanded the respect and fear of his peers and subordinates alike. Gambino's wealth and influence had grown exponentially in the decades since he had orchestrated the assassination of Albert Anastasia and seized control of the Mangano family. His strategic acumen and ruthless efficiency had allowed him to expand the family's reach far beyond its traditional strongholds, diversifying its interests into legitimate industries like construction, waste management, and real estate. Yet despite his outward trappings of success, the sprawling estates, the fleet of luxury cars, the army of loyal capos and soldiers, Gambino remained haunted by the ghosts of his past. The memory of his father's brutal murder in Kakamo continued to weigh heavily on his mind, a constant reminder of the violent origins of his rise to power. As the years passed, Gambino's obsession with maintaining control had only intensified, fueled by a deep-seated paranoia that made him increasingly reclusive and distrustful. He surrounded himself with a tight circle of trusted lieutenants, men who had proven their loyalty through acts of violence and deception, and he kept a watchful eye on the shifting alliances and rivalries that threatened to undermine his authority. Gambino's fear of betrayal was not unfounded. The Mafia hierarchy was a treacherous landscape, where even the slightest misstep could lead to one's downfall. The boss knew that he had amassed a vast number of enemies over the years, both within the Gambino family and among rival organizations, all of whom would relish the opportunity to see him brought low. To counter this ever-present threat, Gambino employed a ruthless and uncompromising approach to leadership. He demanded absolute loyalty from his capos and soldiers, and he was not afraid to use violence to eliminate any perceived threats to his power. Whispers of disloyalty or dissent were met with swift and decisive action, as Gambino orchestrated the elimination of those who dared to challenge his authority. Yet even as Gambino tightened his grip on the Gambino crime family, the moral ambiguity of his actions weighed heavily on his conscience. He was a man torn between the brutal necessities of his position and the lingering guilt over the violence and betrayal that had defined his rise to power. In the rare moments of introspection, Gambino would find himself haunted by the faces of those he had ordered killed, the rival mobsters, the troublesome union leaders, the informants who had betrayed the family. He knew that the price he had paid for his dominance was high and that the ghosts of his past would never truly be laid to rest. Yet even as these doubts crept into his mind, Gambino remained unwavering in his determination to maintain his hold on the Gambino crime family. He was a man driven by an insatiable hunger for power and control, a ruthless pragmatist who was willing to do whatever it took to ensure the survival and expansion of his criminal empire. As the 1970s progressed, Gambino's influence and reach continued to grow extending far beyond the borders of New York City and into other major metropolitan areas across the country. His vast network of connections, both within the Mafia hierarchy and in the legitimate business world, allowed him to amass unprecedented wealth and resources, further solidifying his position as one of the most powerful and feared Mafia bosses in American history. But Gambino's reign as the Mafia kingpin was not without its consequences. The violence and corruption that had become the hallmarks of his leadership had taken a heavy toll on the communities that fell under the Gambino crime family's sway. Extortion, money laundering, and other illicit activities had become a pervasive presence in the daily lives of countless ordinary citizens who lived in fear of the retribution that would come from challenging the family's dominance. The Gambino family's stranglehold on industries like construction and waste management also had far-reaching implications, as Gambino and his lieutenants used their criminal influence to stifle competition, manipulate contracts, and line their own pockets at the expense of the public good. The ripple effects of this systemic corruption were felt throughout the city, contributing to a growing sense of disillusionment and mistrust in the institutions that were supposed to serve the people. Yet even as the social and economic costs of Gambino's reign became increasingly apparent, the Mafia boss remained largely untouchable, shielded by a web of political connections and an intricate system of bribery and intimidation. Law enforcement efforts to dismantle the Gambino crime family often proved futile, as Gambino's vast resources and deep-seated influence allowed him to evade prosecution and maintain his grip on power.
In the later years of his life, as Gambino's health began to decline and the pressures of his position mounted, the aging mafia boss became increasingly reclusive and withdrawn. He retreated further into his heavily guarded compound, trusting fewer and fewer people with the inner workings of his criminal empire. The once formidable Gambino, who had commanded the respect and fear of his peers, had become a virtual recluse haunted by the ghosts of his past and the constant threat of betrayal. As the 1970s drew to a close, the specter of Carlo Gambino's legacy loomed large over the criminal underworld and the broader society he had sought to control. The Gambino crime family, which he had built into one of the most powerful mafia organizations in the country, continued to wield significant influence, even in the face of increasing law enforcement pressure and public scrutiny. Yet for all his success, Gambino's reign as a mafia kingpin had come at a tremendous cost not just to his own personal well-being, but to the very fabric of the communities he had sought to dominate. The violence, corruption, and moral decay that had become synonymous with the Gambino name had left an indelible mark on the city, and the true legacy of Carlo Gambino's life would be a complex and deeply troubling one, marked by both his extraordinary criminal accomplishments and the profound human toll of his ruthless ambition. As the man himself drew his final breath, surrounded by a dwindling circle of loyal associates. The question that lingered was whether the power and wealth he had amassed had been worth the price he had paid. For Carlo Gambino, the answer to that question remained forever shrouded in the shadows of his own dark legacy, a testament to the corrosive effects of unchecked greed and the enduring influence of the Mafia in American society.